going on everyone so d'angelo russell is a real question mark i mean sometimes he plays and he looks like an absolute stud and looks like a guy that you're just like give him a max contract let him go like think a game six against the memphis grizzlies you're like dude this guy is unstoppable and then you see other games where he's like one of 11 and just looks like a guy that's completely unplayable out there and it's just this hot and cold and lack of consistency with D'Lo that is extremely frustrating uh, because on paper, he is a perfect fit next to LeBron James and Anthony Davis as a third guy. Three-level scorer that could go get you eight plus assists a night, could shoot the three ball, plays great off the ball, all of those things. And D'Lo has shown his ability uh, to really be maximized on this roster at times. And he's even talked about it. How, you know, like in other places, I wasn't really used right. It wasn't really used properly. Uh, but we got into this Denver series and he just failed to show up. And it's becoming a real concern and a real question mark. And there's real arguments to be made of just bringing him off the bench at this point. So that way, if he has a great game, great. Then it's just some added input off the bench. But if it doesn't, uh, then you don't you're not getting hurt as much because you can run him in the bench units, uh, maybe even build up his confidence, things like that. Although I don't think D'Angelo Russell is a guy that really lacks confidence. Um, I mean, he's a guy that just keeps shooting, right? He just seems to be a guy that's fearless and and at times like he's had bad games and then really just picked it up and turned it on. But we saw some real positives in the Denver series, right? Or so far in Game One, right? D'Angelo Russell went and scored like eight straight points uh, on Denver. And he was getting to all of his spots all night. He just was failing to knock down the shots. And on the defensive end, he was just getting torched. Now, he's never been a great defender, but he had some great defensive moments uh, in the last two series. And I just don't know if it was just a bad game, um, if he's going to pick it up in game two. I, I just, I don't know. And I do give D'Lo a lot of credit at the end of game one, he was up getting shots uh, after in the post game. I give him a lot of credit for that because not many guys do that. A lot of guys, they have a bad night and they just say, hey, you know, it's a bad night. We'll get it back tomorrow, right? He was in there and was really working on his shot. And he's hit some big shots and had some big moments in this playoffs. I mean, he completely saved the season in game and in, uh, in the first round, right? Against Memphis was absolutely massive. Uh, he's had moments in the Warriors series. He needs to have moments in this Denver series. But he's becoming a liability on both ends because he doesn't have the elite defense. But he is so good when he is on that it's you you just you can't even take him off the floor, right? It's not a coincidence that the Lakers are are undefeated when he scores 17 or more points. Because when he's on, he's on. You can't stop him. He's getting assists. He's just, he's playing like an absolute stud. And on the defensive end, you see things like this, where Bruce Brown said uh, the game plan was to attack D'Angelo Russell on every possession. And Bruce Brown said, you know, that he's not a good defender. And so, you know, we wanted to make him work. Okay, well, I understand that. And that's fine. And you can live with that if D'Lo is giving you 17 points per game on 50 and 50 percent shooting right like 50 percent from three 50 percent from the field I mean he was shooting that in the regular season and then in spots in this playoffs when he's on he's shooting about 47 percent from the field and you know 39 percent from three like the guy when he is on is lights out but when he's not on he's just he's really bad and that's a real problem. And then you see uh, the reports that came out uh, about potentially sitting D'Angelo Russell, that the Lakers are scared that they might end up losing him if this was to happen. So according to ESPN's Dave McMinnon, he wrote uh, how moving Russell to the bench uh, would make sense, but reported there is concerns that the team could lose the 27-year-old point guard if he views the adjustment as a demotion after starting every other game this postseason. So... The concern in the thought process is, okay, we're going to start Dennis Schroeder for the defensive purposes and his ability to get to the rim, right? Um, there's a lot of sense in that. There's a real argument in that. I made a whole video talking about how Dennis Schroeder, like there's a real argument to start Dennis Schroeder in this series. Um, and you move D'Lo to the bench 
and you allow him to thrive against the bench unit, who, for Denver, it's just basically Bruce Brown. So at that point, all you need is D'Angelo Russell to just outplay Bruce Brown six out of the next six games, right? And maybe that would kind of get him back into a rhythm. Maybe he'd be better. That's the idea. But the concern is, is that how will he react? How will he take it? How would he respond if that was to happen? Uh, because they want him for the future. Even if you do intend to trade him at some point, you still need him to stay and sign him to a contract. Because if you don't, then you just lose him for nothing. So even guys like I've talked about with like Mo Bamba, who hasn't really played and he's kind of been pointless. Uh, Malik Beasley, right? He has been terrible for the Lakers for the most part, uh, even though I continue to hold out hope for him. And I'd like to see him maybe get a little run in this series, especially against his old team in Denver. But that's neither here nor there. The reason the Lakers are going to keep those guys is because if you don't, then you just lost them for nothing when they're expiring contracts that you can use to to maybe go get some new assets or go get a new player or two or whatever. D'Lo, right? D'Lo's a guy that, you know, maybe you could use him to go get, I'm just throwing something out there, but like, let's say you could go get a Trey Young, right? Let's say they're like, hey, you know, we'll take one first and D'Angelo Russell and you can have Trey Young. I mean, maybe you do something like that. Again, not saying that should happen, anything like that. My point is that like, you know, maybe something on the horizon comes up that, they could use D'Angelo Russell to trade, even if you don't think he really is the true point guard of the future. You don't want to just lose him for nothing. But here's the thing. The goal is to win the NBA championship. You know, facts over feelings, matchups over feelings, winning over feelings. If D'Angelo Russell is hurt and feels like it's a demotion, but we win this series and we potentially win an NBA championship and he was a part of that, and he's upset and he wants to leave, let him. At that point, just who cares? I know it sucks. I know it would it would not be fun to, to lose him. And, you know, but if you win an NBA championship, who cares? It was worth it. If, if, winning it, if tomorrow you told me, hey, you're going to lose D'Angelo Russell, but you're going to win an NBA championship, I would say, okay, fine. Get the, here, take him. Right, like if if it meant winning an NBA championship. Now the the problem lies is if you do that and you still lose, and now you lose D'Lo, and it was like you did that for nothing when you would have lost either way. So it is kind of this fine line of concern. Personally, I think you play D'Lo. I think you start D'Lo. I think you start Rui. Personally. I think you, you leave Shooter on the bench for now. And if you want, you could bring him in and, you know, four minutes into the game, whatever. You know, you could adjust it however you want. But if it was me, I would keep D'Lo in the starting lineup, bring in Rui Hachimura, because you had some success in that, right? And go D'Lo, Reeves, Rui, LeBron, and AD. Because now what you could do is you could put Reeves on Murray, and see how that matchup works. LeBron can now guard Michael Porter Jr., which would be a better favorable matchup, and then D'Angelo Russell could guard KCP. Okay, so now you you have that, and then Rui would guard uh, Jokic, and then Anthony Davis play in that spy spot, um, and, and be that help defender, right? Okay, cool. I am all for that. And I would give D'Lo a fair opportunity. I would even tell him, like, hey, dude, you give me another performance like that, you got to come off the bench, my guy. Like, I'm sorry. I want you to start. I'm rooting for you. But we have to win these games. And if you're, you know, a minus 25, although plus minus isn't the whole argument, but, you know, hey, man, you're a minus 25. You know, you're, you're giving us nothing on the defensive end, giving us nothing really on the offensive end. You're supposed to be the third guy. You're D'Lo. You know, you're Mr. Ice in your veins. We need you. Right? You got Austin Reeves here putting up 20 points every game. You know, we got Rui coming in and giving us 20 points a game. You know, Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder, yes, he's a liability on the offense at times, but at least he's providing defense. You know, I want you to play, but if you're going, you got to at least give me 15 a game. At least. If you can't give me 15 a game, you're not giving me anything on the defensive end. I have to bench you. I don't have a choice whether I want to or not. We need to try to win this series. And I just, I would be honest. Like, look, dude, this is your moment. You want to stay in the starting lineup? Prove it. Show me. 
and see what D'Lo does. See how D'Lo responds. If D'Lo balls out, maybe he goes off for 30 and we win by 20 and we win in dominant fashion and he wakes up and he's like, man, I don't want to, I don't want to be coming off the bench, man. I'm supposed to be a 30 million a year guy, but he's right. I'm getting killed on the defensive end. I'm only giving him eight points. I was shooting some extra shots. Like I would, I would reward him for shooting those extra shots. But again, whether the Lakers win or lose, they lose game two, or even if they win by game two by 30, if D'Lo is a non-factor again, sorry, buddy, like that's it. You know, unless he just, unless like everyone else has it going and D'Lo has like 15 assists or something like that. You know what I mean? Like one of those games where like, oh, D'Lo only had six points and it's like, well, he only took two shots, but he had 15 assists because, you know, Austin Reeves and Lonnie Walker and, you know, Dennis Schroeder and Rui Hachimura and everyone else was just shooting the lights out. So D'Lo just was, just went full on playmaker, right? Unless it's something like that, I, I, you, you can't start, buddy. Like, you just can't. Like, it's just not how it goes. Like, if he doesn't show up and perform, whether we win or lose, again, Lakers could win by 30 and blow them out. But if D'Lo played 25 minutes and only gave us eight points and shot three of 11 from the field or whatever, I'm sorry. I, like, I, I, I'll take your eight points off the bench. I can't have your eight points in my starting lineup. I can't go game to game with your lack of consistency in a series that you should dominate. A series that you should dominate. You're a three-level scorer. These guys can't guard you. This is the worst defense we'll, we'll play in this entire playoffs. The Lakers were getting everything that they wanted. Everything. D'Lo was getting every look he wanted. He was getting wide open shots and just couldn't hit it. And it's just like, dude, like I love D'Lo as a player. I think he is a great talent, but his lack of consistency in these playoffs have been terrible. He was great in the regular season for us. He was really good in the regular season, right? He was shooting like 50% uh, from the field and like 42% from three. Like, that's great. Like, unbelievably good. And he did it the whole season for us, right? And every time he has a good game... That, that's his numbers. That's what he's shooting. He's shooting. But I don't need that. I would rather him give me 50, instead of shooting 50% from the field and, you know, 45% from three, I'd rather you just shoot 37% from three and shoot 45% from the field and give me 15 points per game every single night. I would rather him every single night, like clockwork, just give me 15 a night than him one game giving me 10 and the next game him giving me 30 right or 25 or something like that because at least I know what D'Lo is going to show up so I know what everyone else is going to do if D'Lo every single night is giving you 15 points and six assists okay I know I'm go I'm getting from D'Lo I'm getting at least 30 to 42 points a game in production between the assists and the and the baskets, right? Perfect. So I just need to make so LeBron and AD just need to make up, you know, whatever the other fifty points collectively, and then Reeves is gonna go get you his fifteen, and you know Rui's gonna go get you his fifty. And now, I, at least now I know. Okay, you know, hey, it was a there was a game where he had you know ten. Okay, that's fine. You know, guys have bad games. I don't mind when D if D'Lo has a bad game. I don't mind if anybody has a bad game. Bad games happen. That's why it's a seven-game series, even for teams. Like, the Lakers were terrible and had a chance to win that game. They were. They, the defense did not even... They might as well have just stayed in L.A., right? And bad games happen. Again, that's why it's a seven-game series. But it can't be every other game for D'Lo. It can't be, you know, we have two games out of the series where he is great in the other games, it's like, my guy's rough. Like, it's just, I, I can't I can't count on that. You know, he wants to be paid. Even when we traded for D'Lo, I said he wasn't a 30 million a year guy. I said he was a 20 to 25 million a year guy. Still think he's in that ballpark, 20 to 25 million. But, he, I mean, he's he hasn't even earned that. I mean, he's played like a 15 million a year guy. I mean, Dennis Schroeder, in many ways, has outplayed him, and he's a vet minimum guy. You know, it's just, I, I, 
I just, yeah. I mean, if you're gonna have, if you're gonna have D'Lo be in the starting lineup, he's gotta perform. Again, he doesn't have to be great. I don't need thirty a game. I mean, if he can, perfect. But I don't need him to score thirty a night. I just need him to go give me half of that, <laughs> consistently fifteen points a game, and I think he could. And I think he's good. Um, but again, I'd give him game two. If he shows up, great. If he doesn't, it's time to sit on the bench, guy. Like I, I would. I, I don't know if I'd make that change yet, but I, I'd want to give him a fair shot. Because if you can get him to to wake up, you're going to win this series. But you need him to wake up, right? But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? Do you think, like, not nah, switch it now? Do you think, like, who cares how he feels about it? Uh, do you think, no, like, yeah, give him give him that game too. See how he responds. See how he shows up. Um, but if it continues to be a trend, then you got to make the switch. However you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments.